What's up YouTube? I'm Joe. You're watching my channel Ink and Iron, back with a multi-tool first impression of the Gerber Dual Force. I know I'm a, like a week behind everyone else on this tool, uh, but it took a week to get here despite paying overnight shipping on Gerber's website. So don't buy this directly from Gerber. They use UPS and UPS is not performing well recently. And also Gerber will charge you a hundred bucks for this, whereas like White Mountain Knives is selling this for like 80. So yeah, if you can find it in stock for less than a hundred bucks, go do that. Don't buy direct from Gerber. Um, though they did refund my shipping when I asked them. So they have customer service on their side, but not their uh, shipping choices. Anyway, Gerber Dual Force, much anticipated tool. This thing has slip joint pliers of considerable size. Uh, very, very large. Let me see here. Do I have a ruler? In terms of inches, we're looking at about, uh, what, seven and a half inch tool overall. And uh, metric, yeah, about 19 centimeters. Yeah, 19, 19 and a half. Uh, yeah, considerably sized. Let me uh, give you a quick visual comparison with the Leatherman Surge. Here's my black Surge. I actually broke it in recently using uh, some diamond paste so it's nice and nice and smooth at the moment but look at look at that freaking pair of pliers they're massive they're absolutely massive just for some perspective here right these are knipex um uh, whatchamacallit what do you call these knipex twin grip pliers yeah this this is a huge like basically full-sized set of pliers. Here's a Husky slip joint version or um, like automa automatic slip joint. Like when you open it, it uh, opens itself up wider, right? There's like full extension and then it pivots into the slip joint position. Anyway, yeah, almost the same size. These things are huge, man. So keep it in mind, this is a big tool. Although I think it comes in at uh, less weight less weight than the surge. Let's actually check it on a scale. Okay, Gerber Dual Force. We're looking at 11.9 ounces or 337.9 grams, whereas the Leatherman Surge, 12.45 ounces and 353.1 grams. So it manages to be lighter than the surge, which is pretty impressive. The surge is a beast to carry. So this is probably going to be a little bit more of a carryable option for a lot of people. So let's talk about all the stuff you're getting in the Gerber dual force package before we carry on. It does come with a sheath, a uh, kind of a not great sheath, um, some very 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 wide horizontal carry uh, loops I guess for like a duty belt. And then uh, yeah another pretty large slot for vertical carry and let's see there is a little um, what do you call it nylon webbing sleeve right here and then this part's actually stretchy so if we close this up <laughs> I always do this no one else seems to have this problem I have been closing these improperly since I've gotten them if you open up the the twin position of the jaw there. It doesn't close up properly. Also, you're hearing that correctly. It is very sharp and loud sound, uh, you know, to open and close. A bit a bit clacky, but it does fit in the sheath. Um, it does, you know, Velcro securely. You could put in the uh, bits if you had a, uh, you know, Gerber center drive. You have the whole bit set. You can fit the bit set in the sheath as well. It gets a little bit tight but it still velcros on pretty securely. So yeah, the sheath will do, although if you're you know really doing it right, um, use the Gerber center drive sheath because it is a little bit friendlier on the backside and happens to be exactly the same size, even a little bit bigger it seems for the bit, the bit carrier there. Doesn't velcro quite as perfectly, but you know, I think that's a pretty worthy trade off. All right, anyway. There you go, comes with a sheath, it's all right. If you're you know, looking for something better, I'd probably recommend the uh, center drive sheath, actually. Just go ahead and, and trade them. 
So we can see the aesthetic very similar to our center drive, and this is just the regular center drive, not the plus. On the outside, we have four tools plus two bits, bit holders, that is. So we can swap our bits in and out depending on what we use every day, like that. Uh, these are much easier to get open than on the center drive, right? We have this little sharp piece of metal that you have to pop out, and that's not so bad if you're doing it a couple of times a day. If you need to swap bits like, you know, a couple dozen times a day, this is going to rake up your thumb pretty good. So, yeah, be careful of the skin on your hands there with the uh, Gerber center drive. But the dual force is solving this problem by using plastic overmolded components rather than, you know, little steel tabs. And you get two bits, which is pretty nice. You get two bits at the expense of literally any other tools. So this has two bits, right? It has a third bit in the driver, which is not quite as in line as it seems. You can see it kind of veers to the right a little bit. And the only reason I point that out is because I was looking at it compared to my center drive. And yeah, look at that. Do you see how the center drive is more central? It is more well aligned with the center axis of the tool than on the dual force here, right? Because if we were supposing a straight line out from there, it would not veer off to the right. Okay, there you go. So uh, in terms of comfort, that does feel like it's going to drive okay. I haven't really put it to the test because I, well, just got the tool because it ships so late. But I have, you know, pretty pretty high hopes for the uh, the driver on here. The Gerber Center Drives driver is very cool, very handy, very comfortable, and honestly one of the best aspects of either of these tools. So next to the driver, we have a file, and we actually have a good file. There's a single cut side, a double cut side, an edge file. It's really hard to see in this lighting, apparently. And then on the tip, we have a chisel. Now this is unusual, especially for Gerber. I've never seen them do a chisel before. The only tool that I have with a chisel, if I can find it on my desk here, oh, it's right here. Uh, the Swiss Tool Spirit MX has this sort of multi-blade here. There's a chisel at the tip, kind of a package opener and wire stripper. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. But you can see these chisels are on completely different scales. So yeah, I wanted to do a little bit of testing here. Here's a little scrap of like, this is either pine or, or fir or something. With a chisel, you typically use it, um, what is called bevel down or uh, Sorry, bevel up is what I do most of the time. You can use bevel down, which is like like this. Kind of gouges into the wood more. This kind of skates across the surface. So let's see. These are not great chisels by any stretch. I work with chisels very regularly in the uh, furniture repair shop where I work. So yeah, these are light duty at best. It's not, not doing considerable damage. Um, to this wood. It is not moving a lot of material. And it really wants to kind of skate across the surface, probably because the bevel is quite steep. So, there you go. Swiss Tools chisel is fairly rudimentary. Now we can see the Gerber Center Drive. This is a much more appropriate bevel angle for a chisel. It is also slightly hollow ground, as you might be able to tell. So I think this is gonna cut pretty well, but let's see. Uh, yeah, wow. That feels like a real chisel. That's surprising. I thought maybe the uh, file on the backside would, would be a hang up. Um, let's see, I actually have, uh, this is oak. You can tell because it has this chatoyance in the grain there. This is a very hard wood. I'm pretty sure it's oak given its density, but, oh, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to bump the camera there. Yeah, we can actually chisel, ugh, chisel this oak and fairly cleanly. So yeah, all right. So far, so good on the chisel. Okay, now let's put the chisel away and move on to our next tool. 
we have a, uh, a saw here, kind of a blunt nose saw. Can't tell if it's ground properly. I'm assuming it is. No multi-tool company has really screwed up the grind on a saw yet that I've seen. Uh, the black coating really, really dense on here, just like the uh, center drive was. I actually scrubbed it with uh, a steel brush to, to shed a lot of that color. And weirdly enough, it turned some of the tools like sort of a bronzy color. Yeah, not sure what's going on there. Um, I did use a combination of uh, brass brushes and steel brushes, so who knows, maybe I deposited something. But uh, yeah, the saw looks pretty good. It does seem to cut on the uh, pull stroke rather than the push stroke. Let's see here. I don't know how much sawing we're really going to get done with this tiny little piece of oak. But... Ooh. Yeah, this is this is definitely for some, some rough, rough work probably more like green wood. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty hard to do a piece this small, especially when it's not like clamped in anything. Um, you're gonna be doing like tree limbs more with this thing. And the grip is actually fairly comfortable for that. I have a medium sized hand and this fills it very nicely. Uh, let me see, can you actually, no, you can't extend it out anymore. So yeah, fairly comfortable. Um, I think it's just gonna be, you know, a very rough work kind of saw. The uh, lock is a little bit tough to disengage on that one. We'll see if that breaks in. The knife blade doesn't deploy super smooth, um, but it is full sized, which I appreciate. I think it's actually, you know, the center drive also doesn't deploy perfectly smooth. Is it the same size? They look to be pretty much exactly the same size. Yeah, these blades both appear to be the same size and exactly the same blade. I believe they come sharp. I know the center drive is pretty sharp. pretty good. I think the profile is not exactly working in its favor with this sort of saber grind right here. Also, I don't think the black coating really helps a blade be smoother in terms of cutting, but it seems to be pretty sharp. Let's see if we can shave a little bit. Certain spots of the blade seem to grab some hairs, but not a whole lot. So a, a usefully sharpened blade, but not uh, not perfect. You're, you know, if you're obsessive like me, you, you probably end up touching it up. Okay, and that is all of our exterior tools besides the bits here. And uh, oh, you know what? I did want to check <clears throat> just compatibility with like I've got just like my Harbor Freight bit set here. I grabbed a couple of weird ones. Why not? I never use these. Okay, yeah, there's magnetic retention, so that's good. And uh, it takes just a standard quarter inch, quarter inch hex shank uh, bit. So, yeah, there you go. Not sure what this one does. This is like a specialty security bit, but fits in there nicely. It's, yeah, it takes a, a determined pull to actually get it out. So, yeah, feels pretty much the same. Yeah feels the same as the center drive, so if you like that retention system, you're going to like it on this one. Uh, we do have uh, proprietary pivots here, so you're not going to be adjusting anything on this tool, at least not easily. Uh, let me see, how do bits come in and out of here? Oh, a little oily. I was wondering where all the oil was on this tool. Um, can you see that? Oh, there you go. Yeah, the bits are slightly oiled. This is maybe the cleanest multi-tool, like straight out of the package that I've had, besides like the black coating that is currently shedding on my hands. In terms of oil, it is not like drenched in it, which is nice. I like to not, you know, slide off the tool first day I'm using it. Okay, so these pliers are huge and they have another thing going for them, which is how narrow they are when fully extended. So for an example of this, here's my Knipex. Uh, Cobra pliers, 180 millimeter. You can see that if we overlay these, right, the handles are roughly in the same orientation when closed. Because when you when you compact the center drive, it is also fairly in line. Let me see here. Who's who's a little weird? Here we go. Leatherman Surge. You see how wide this is? Just like before we even do anything with it. So you're already gripping 
a much larger handle in order to, to put pressure on something, let alone like opening up to go for a bolt or something, and now your handles are splayed way, way out. The uh, dual force here seems to be a lot friendlier. Plus you have more handle real estate, so if you open it up way wide, you can choke up, and then as you squeeze, you can come down onto the handles. So I like that. Plus that, uh, you know, second position there. So now we can grip you know, fasteners, bolts, things like that pretty easily. And like, you know, I'm in a comfortable grip right now. Let's see if we go to, yeah, not bad. Okay, pretty good. That is gripping this nut very nicely. I mean, I would expect it to, it is just brass. Um, I've seen people questioning the tips here how durable they're gonna be, and also these sort of over-molded pieces of steel that make up some of the actual jaw profile. So we'll see, I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna hold up. Um, I'm not doing a lot of bolt turning uh, with my tools during the day, so I'm probably not the best judge. Also, you see how this is popping out? That'll happen. As you, um, you know, if you use these and kind of slam them shut, the tools will kind of work themselves out. You can see the chisel popping out a little bit. That one didn't pop up. The, the knife blades are pretty good, but sometimes you'll find that the, uh, the center drive is sort of disengaged from its retention. Okay, and then the last sort of controversial piece of this thing is that right back here are a pair of bypass wire cutters, supposedly. They don't bypass much, I can tell you that. So let's go ahead and try it. And uh, what do we want to use here? Well, surge is open. So let's go ahead and try and cut this. Now this is not the, uh, the ESD, um, you know, electrician's wire cutter. So I'll see, kind of smushing it. It is a braided or multi-strand copper cable in there and I am not skilled at wire cutting. So yeah, kind of mashed it. Not the best, but it did the job. Okay. Okay, Serge. So let's try about the same amount in the Gerber Dual Force and we'll just jam it up in there like we did the Serge. Uh, okay, I mean, I can feel it cutting all right, yeah, we're hanging on by a literal thread. <laughs> Let's see if we move it down into the bypass area. Does that help? Ooh, not really. A couple of strands left there. All right, so it does okay at wire cutting in my limited experience, um, but probably not the best choice for, for an electrician. I know that people are getting straight jawed wire cutters for their surge. Um, for the express purpose of doing, you know, ele electrician's work. So there you go. Um, is it going to be better than the center drive? I actually haven't cut anything with these center drive tungsten carbide inserts. So mm, that is not cutting. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Got to kind of walk it across. And. My cutters are okay, woo, all right. I know these things are like glass for some people. I have to cut more things with mine, but it did cut cleanly. Okay, so dual force maybe not the perfect thing for cutting wire, so if that is part of your daily needs, maybe this isn't the tool for you. Um, if you're doing a lot of bolt turning, this, this might be a favorable option. Also, if you're doing a lot of driving, uh, it is quite handy to have this driver extend out like that and then be able to access the bits from the other side. That is pretty sweet. So yeah, I am, I'm probably gonna tailor mine to uh, what I need every day, which is a lot of slotted, you know, just flat standard bit drivers. Do you work with a lot of antique furniture and they are all just slotted screws. So before we 
leave. Let me do a couple more size comparisons here for you. You've seen the center drive, you've seen the surge. Here is Swiss Tool Spirit MX. Here's your dual force. Here's a Shrade Tough. Shrade Tough, by the way, very large tool, but uh, the dual force is just massive. It really is. Yeah, you can tell. And uh, in terms of like what duty multi tool it is, it is absolutely a heavy duty multi tool. It does this. Um, often to me, if someone knows what I'm doing wrong, please let me know. But like, look, right? I gotta like put pressure on the jaws and then close it. Annoying. And you might think that's a nitpick, but literally all the other multi tool pliers I have can close themselves while closing the handles. So, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan at the outset here. All right, that's the Gerber Dual Force. Thank you for joining me. I've been Joe. You've been watching my channel, Ink and Iron, for more content like this, as well as typewriters, fountain pens, uh, EDC stuff, um, anything I want, because this is my vlog. Go ahead, like, sub, do the things, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.